time now is uh, 5.15. We ask if you all stand. We call the Carver Heights Montclair Area Redevelopment Agency meeting to order. Have an invocation followed by Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this time, this season that you have us in. We're so grateful to be able to serve the citizens of Leesburg and for the capacity that you have selected us, and especially the Mount Clara Carver Heights Redevelopment Agency. We pray, God, that the decisions we make would be beneficial to that community, the businesses that, that are coming, that are thriving in this community. We pray for the residents that the things we do that will eliminate blight and make it a better area for everyone to live, work, and play. We pray for now as we move to our city commission meeting a little later, we pray for our citizens around the entire city of Leesburg, those future developments that are coming, those neighborhoods that have been stable, those that are struggling. We pray tonight that we can make decisions as we move into our Thanksgiving season that we all can have something to be thankful for. And we ask you to touch our hearts and our minds that as we move forward in our meeting that we can make sure that what we do will be pleasing to you. We pray for our troops around the world, those that are away from their families during the holiday season. We pray for the families that are here without their fathers and mothers. We thank you for protecting them and keeping them safe, that we can enjoy the liberties that we so enjoy. We pray for our first responders, our city management, our staff, to God that you would keep them safe, and that our businesses here in Leesburg will continue to be prosperous, and God have good success. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first item of business is to approve our regular meeting held October 11, 2021. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do have a second? Second. Move to properly second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Ms. Annie. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Jasper? Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Chairperson Christian? Yes. Item three is a purchase authorization for a fence around Berry Park. So I'd like to introduce the resolution, please. I'll introduce to be read by Tyler only. Thank you. Resolution of the Carver Heights Montclair Area Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the city manager to execute a construction work order via the Continuing Services EZIQC Gordian contract with Johnson Locks for the construction of decorative fencing and electronic parking gate for Berry Park and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Second. Move to probably second discussion. I have a couple questions concerning the uh, proposal. Um, as I was reading the information, it was saying the fiscal impact, the contract price $260,000 was to be provided by the Carver Heights CRA budget. I recall in a previous meeting, I think Commissioner Roebuck had suggested that we don't use CRA dollars for this. I think City Manager, you were going to come back with the proposals from different departments. I did not do that. I do think the best expense for the project is through the CRA funds. Um, that was Commissioner Roebuck's suggestion. If the board chooses to shift it to the commission, um, Fred, can this body approve that, or do we need to then vote on it at the at the scene that all the commissioners are here? We did not. It, at the commission so so if if this body would rather see it go to the commission then i think the commission can do that it, and then the, then the number would just come out of reserve funds okay. i would like to see that if you don't the just just for my own clarification now the the money that we just appropriated i think it was like three quarters of a million would it not come out of that fund those monies would be, well, no, I don't think that this would be an eligible expense for the recovery money. And then the, the three quarters of a million would be the West CDC. So I don't, I don't think it would be their responsibility to take it from there. So I, I think the appropriate expenditure for the funds is either this CRA or to shift it to the general fund of the city. Yeah, uh, and when I made the, the original su suggestion for the general fund, um, yeah, that was that was prior to, to putting putting the seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars 
to to the um, Wesleysburg CDC. So I, I'm okay with it being CRA because we just have now have all that other money that we're gonna gonna spend in the area as well. I would agree with that. I think for me, I think, um, and I have a major problem with CRA, but I, I wish we would actually go out and borrow enough money to do major improvements throughout the Carver Heights CRA. I think this approach kind of gets us to the point where we're taking money, spending it, and we're doing small projects, and this will be a small project that I would consider as opposed to us going out and borrow a couple million dollars, taking the bond proceeds and paying that off and doing major things at one time as opposed to getting a proposal on fence, took us two months to do it, building the fence, take another six months, and then we'll be doing this process all the year. So we'll do one project maybe a year as opposed to going out and borrowing the funds and, and really getting rid of blight. Um, so that would be my only suggestions. I mean, right now we bought the house for 175, we spent 260, and so basically the CRA funds are depleted until till next year as opposed to taking the projects that we're talking about doing in Carver Heights, um, going and borrowing a couple million dollars and taking that bond <clears throat> proceeds and paying it off. Um, I think that's probably the best approach to do. Um, not that I'm against um, doing this project, but I just think um, I would like to see us do major projects at, at one time over a course of a year or two as opposed to doing it, doing it this way. So that, that would be my, my suggestion if we move forward. It's a, it's a tackle the blight at one time as opposed to just doing one project at a time. And just a question, because I, I agree agree with uh, with the mayor on that. With that, so we still have the, the TIF coming in after this year, and that's, what is, is that, what number is that roughly? I think a buck 50-ish or buck so buck 50-ish. Can we, would we be able to, if we wanted to tackle bigger projects, be able to use or, or all of that 750 as as kind of the the collateral on an on a note then with then use the, the TIF proceeds because they're not gonna let us borrow if we don't uh, have okay. cash I, a I still think you're going to be in a position to to do the mayor's suggestion with the to be able to pledge future TIF revenues to help you leverage your bond even with this expense secondly the answer to your question is could you use the 750 Again, I would think one of the CDCs would need to, uh, to work in partnership with us, and two, then those expenses would need to be made on all requirement, or all requirement, American recovery, <laughs> ARP, all requirement project, all, all the American recovery pro qualified projects. So I, I, I think it could be an improvement. I think it could be an option, but I, think, I just think there's multiple steps. And, and, the, and the reason this was, this was placed on the agenda too is, you know, the, the, the mayor's given me requests to get the issues over at Berry Park addressed. I think this is the quickest way to do that. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to do a stopgap measure to put up a temporary type of fence. I mean, we're trying to, the, the whole object of putting this fence in is these are the type of fences, this is the standard throughout the city. These are the things that we're doing to prevent um, for lack of better words, rift, raft, and mischief in, in all our city parks. Um, and so, um, because the issues at Berry Park persist with parking in some of the parcels that we have and with, with loitering after hours, this is the way to quickly combat that issue and to, um, and to make it similar to what we've done in other parts of the community and to give the police the, the, the ability to tackle those issues quickly without having to do something makeshift. So I, I think we're getting, we're, we're accomplishing one of the goals. I don't think this is going to fix every problem in Barry Park. I think that this is a good first step. Um, so I would encourage you guys to move forward with it as presented. It, the, the CRA's purpose is to remove blight and address issues in the Carver Heights CRA district. This is certainly a qualifying project for that. I still think you're in the position to leverage those monies in the future. And then I would think the monies that you gave to the CDCs, whether it be the East, the West Leesburg CDC or the Leesburg CDC, will probably complement the, these type of projects. So I would, I would continue to move forward. The second thing I would do is if you don't want to pay it out of the CRA fund is then, yeah, shift it over to the general fund and we can shift some projects around or use cash. So 
I would go with A or B. I think A, the number one thing is that yes, it, it, the ARP funds were spent in, in, um, with the CDCs to address blighted areas. We also did the Pine Street, so that does help dis disperse and use some general fund monies in other areas. So I think we've got a good mix going on, and I don't think you go wrong with do, doing the expenditure this way or shifting it to the reserves and the general fund. Al, I thank you so much for your efforts, and I really appreciate everything. But I have a quick question. Do you have a model of how big is going to cover the coverage as far as the dimensions? Because Barry Park is pretty wide I didn't, and pretty I didn't long. put a map on, on, in, the, in the packet. But what the, what the wrought iron fence does is it goes from uh, the entryway on gate picture. rounds the corner and then goes all the way to the woods on the north side of the park um, uh, to the intersection that's Tuskegee John. and, and, and John's. So it covers that area. I think what we'll have to do is if the problems consist, then come back and look at a different approach because um, we've got homeless issues too um, and, and those issues are coming from the um, the, the trail side, mm -hmm. the south side. But the immediate pressing issue is the corner there and keeping cars from coming into the parking lot. And this does accomplish that. Okay. Also, too, I was going to say, I, I like what you said, um, Commissioner, I mean, excuse me, Mayor, <laughs> Mayor, about um, moving forward and doing big, bigger projects in the future. Because I know they've done that in the past. They've taken out loans and they've paid them off in a timely fashion with CRA funds, so I would like to do that. I know I presented earlier in the year about some ideas and projects that I want to do, and we've never really discussed it, so I think that kind of tie into the vision of the idea about eliminating blight and things of that nature. So I, I, I like that idea. I, I like that. I, I would prefer not to use CRA funds so we can have those funds to, to go get a bigger loan, so I do second that, so thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think uh, what Al has said, I, I know Commissioner Peterson has something, um, is, is with the American Recovery Act funds, with these funds, you know, we came back and did a, a small loan with the TIF dollars um, allocated. I think it's gonna be a major major improvement in the car hikes. I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen the CDC, West Leesburg CDC's plan, but I think um, with the purchase of the Beecher, um, John's lot, I, I think that, that area is gonna, gonna improve um, immediately. And I think the city continue to look at other ways, other problematic areas, I think it's gonna be vital for us to continue to move forward. So, um, you know, I, I'm good um, with, the, Mr. Minner's um, assistance bringing us some projects that we can tackle um, in, in the near future. As long as we have the TIF funds, he said TIF funds will be available. I think we are we are getting a, I think we're getting more than 150. So I think we're going to be. But I think we got the other. We paid for the gym, a teen center, or something. Um, but I think we will have funds to do something with. And Mr. Kapish, Peterson, I think that's all. I guess I was pretty vocal in budget meeting on this one, but uh, no, I agree with uh, Commissioner Roebuck. Uh, he said what I was about to say, and I apologize, I've got a head cold. Um, but you know, after we gave the 750 to the uh, West uh, Side CDC, it, I, thought, I thought it was a good idea to use general funds, but I, I think now it needs to come out of CRA. Um, we, in budget, you know, my comments were, I had no problem borrowing money, I just didn't want us to borrow too much money. Uh, we talked about that, and I believe we talked about prioritizing projects. I remember, but I don't know if I ever saw a list on the priorities. Um, uh, you know, with some dollar amounts, but uh, I, th I think it's a good plan to move forward in that direction. You guys tasked us with that, and so we'll, we'll be back to the board with some suggestions and, and some recommendations on how to leverage that, that revenue for debt. And, and just for my sake in learning, when I hear bond, I think of a lot of closing costs. Are these, is this a simpler? Well, probably, well, typically the they're larger. The, we'll probably go bank note is my okay, guess. Okay, that makes more sense, okay. I do have a question, though. Al. We're, we're putting the fence up because of loitering? Is that what we're doing? Is that the reason we're needing the fence? Loitering and aesthetics. So if we put the fence up, I mean, do, is there a curfew on when you can be in and out of Berry Park? And are, are, is it going to yeah, be enforced? Yeah, well, there, there, there's a curfew now. All the parks close, I believe, at sunset or 10 p.m. is, 10, is 10 the, it's 10, right? Yeah, it's so, 10 so the, the issue with not having a fence, it, it just becomes hard to enforce and get people out of there. So with the fence, then we'll have a better position to be able to keep folks out after, okay. after hours. So if we spend 
like you said, it's quite a bit of money. If we spend this, I mean, we're going to be able to enforce this now and then keep people out of the park after hours? We will do a better job, yes. <laughs> and, and also, Commissioner, um, it's not even all just at the hours. If you go now, people are literally driving their vehicles um, across the parking lot, across the grass, right up to the picnic bench. So you can have seven cars or trucks backed up right near the picnic bench. So the fence will eliminate you driving your car right beside the picnic bench. So if you go in a lot or now you got to like to park in the parking lot where you designated and walk to the picnic bench and do what the park's supposed to do is sit at the picnic bench, have a picnic and go home, not park your car, turn your music on, and you got a little small block party at the park. And, sure. and that's basically what is taking place. So it makes it really difficult for Dr. Jasper or Commissioner Roebuck to say, I'm gonna take my family, have a picnic when I got seven vehicles parked right beside the picnic bench. And it just takes away what we're trying to do as a city to say this is a community park for families. And you know, the homeless is another issue, but this, these are not homeless people that are coming. They just kind of park there all day long. Okay, that makes sense, Jim. Did we, we also talked about cameras, I thought, or at least a camera at the gate. Yes, and, and we have some cameras so. out there, and, and as part of this project, we'll make sure that we get the security we need on, on the fence. One last question. Uh, this electric gate, who's going to be responsible for opening and closing it? The city workers? Or? It, it autom yes, it's automated and city workers. So it's going to be time on a time? Okay. Kind of like when a ski beach? It just like it. On a timer? Okay, perfect. Any other comments from the commission, from the public? Roll call, please. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Jasper? Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Chairperson Christian? Yes. Roll call, please. Commissioner Peterson? Nothing tonight. Commissioner Burry? Nothing tonight. Commissioner Jasper? Nothing tonight. Commissioner Roebuck? Nothing tonight. Commissioner Connell? Nothing. Chairperson Christian? Well, I'm just excited about activity in the Carver Heights, Mount Clare community. Um, the city uh, actually addressing so many needs and issues that's been here for a long time. So I'm excited to see the, the forward progress. Uh, I think we put a lot of money and work in the Berry Park. So I, I think it's, it's great that we are making sure that it's maintained at a, at a high city standard. So that's all I have for tonight. And thank you, Al and staff, and look forward to the priority list that you come up with <laughs> yeah it, it's neat to see all the concepts kind of slowly spreading throughout the city so yes. it, it'll be a neat project to get done thank you sir motion to adjourn
that, that good. You're not on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs>
can you come? Can you come tell us about this, the state and national trip? What, what we getting ready to give money to? Oh my goodness! Uh, thank you so much uh, for just considering us. Um, by winning state, we qualify to go to nationals, which will be at Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so what we're trying to do is we, we need about six thousand uh, to make it, you know, there so that every kid can stay, eat, bowl, uh, and, and be successful. So. Um, it's June, 20, June 18th through the 22nd. Uh, we'll be there for a weekend, and uh, we're really excited. I think we got a shot here. All right. Well, we have a motion this second to contribute $3,000 towards the um, trip. Uh, any discussion from the commission? From the public? Okay, roll call. So it's hard to vote no when y'all sitting there looking at us, so let's, let, <laughs> let, let, let's, let, let's see how, how they Get vote. Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. If you fall short, come back and see us. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, tonight, we have no presentations um, except tab for us for public comment. With this section reserved for members of the public to bring up matters of concern or opportunities for praise, issues brought up will not be discussed in detail at this meeting it will either be referred to the proper staff or will be scheduled for consideration at a future com city commission meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes, please. Are there any public comments tonight? And team, if you don't have to stay if you don't want, um, unless you want a civics lesson and how the city <laughs> commission work. You don't but but to take, take your money, you can leave. <laughs> Congratulations once again. I'm Joni Smalley, 1002 South 9th Street, Leesburg. I'm the executive director at the Leesburg Partnership. Um, I just wanted to thank our community, the commissioners, our board of directors, and everyone for a very successful Leesburg Bike Fest. We are no not done with our numbers, but we do appreciate everybody's support. It was a great event. The weather was perfect. Um, we just we had a really good event and everybody seemed happy but I wanted to thank you all for your support um, everybody we worked with with the city was great help and we appreciate it thank you miss Johnny for thank what you, you what you do for our city thank you any other public comment okay we'll move to our consent agenda where routine items are placed on the consent agenda to expedite the meeting with the Commission staff which discuss any item the procedures as follows pull the items from the consent agenda Vote on the remaining items with one roll call vote and discuss each pull item and vote by roll call. Are there any items from would like to pull tonight? Uh, B2. B2. There's no items. We'll entertain a motion for the remaining items. Sir, uh, Ms. Do, do we have the community, like community action, are the names already put on that? There, okay. Yeah, I'm Great. A motion to approve the main items. Move to approve. Thank you, sir. Second. Se second. Move to probably second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Connell? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. Item B2 is the purchase request. Purchase request by Public Works for improvements at Pat Thomas Stadium using an existing job order contract with Johnson Locks Con Contracting Inc. for an amount not to exceed $400,000. Give a motion. Motion, motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, discussion. Ms. Connell, you pulled this one? I did. Uh, Mr. Johnson's here. I'd like to give him a few minutes just to kind of talk to us about the improvements and, um, you know, what he might see in the future that Pat Thomas still may need to have done. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Mr. City Manager, thanks for allowing us the opportunity to work on this project. On behalf of Tyler Brandenburg, Kim Higgins, John Meyer, we're grateful for this opportunity. We think the stadium brings a great deal to the city. And quite frankly, as you know, we just care about it more than most people. 
the uh, city graciously allocated $400,000 and we worked diligently uh, in prioritizing the modifications and improvements to the stadium to give the biggest bang for the buck for the city and for the use of the stadium. It's outlined pretty well for you. As always, we're always a little over budget. We met again last week and cut some more out of it. Uh, we cut two items that quite frankly we thought should be in there, uh, but we had to get down to the $400,000. So if you wanna know what the two items are, you'll have to ask me. But it's a significant improvement to the stadium. Our long-term goal, and I hope the city's is too, is to ensure that the stadium is used more than just for the baseball field. It's a great venue for lots of other things. These improvements will make that happen, make it easier. There's no reason why the city, in conjunction with Venetian Gardens and Venetian Cove, can't make the stadium an integral part of it with everything going on down there. So we're grateful. Um, when talking to Commissioner Connell, I'm grateful for his input and his willingness to uh, spearhead this project. But he asked me the other day, uh, as did Travis Rima, uh, am I happy? No, I'll never be happy, folks. Uh, I'm a lot happier, but I'll never be happy and I'll never be satisfied. Uh, the next thing I want the city to consider as a result of the building being vacant as you come into the stadium on the left that where the church was and where the medical center was for the city is to consider allowing uh, that be integrated into the stadium on a temporary basis so we can create a museum for the history of Leesburg's baseball. Give the people of the city the opportunity to come there, look at how the great history is six or seven months in hopes that if you let us stand there for six or seven months, you'll never get us out. Uh, we can put great use to that building in conjunction with the stadium and in conjunction with the citizens of our community. Uh, we can make it better along with the city. It's our, always our goal to partner with the city of Leesburg just to make it better. That's our goal. I answer any questions you like. What, what are the two items, Joe? We um, moved the fence back toward closer to the road and the idea was to concrete that area from the new fence back to the stadium so that we could have more usable f space all the time for the different venues that we anticipate, or the different events that we anticipate. Just a better using, if you go to any stadium, there's not any grass there. Uh, any stadium you go to will have a solid base in which to put tents up and things of that nature. The other one, we wanted better handicapped parking spots. We wanted uh, three or four handicapped parking spots paved so that those folks didn't have to park in the grass also. We thought that was worthy of that. Um, and that's just, uh, we couldn't make it with us. Uh, we did this in a priority and this was, we just whittled it down last week and said this, this has to go and this is the least priority we have. And so um, feel free to put that back in if you want to. But I'm at the $400,000 level and that was uh, what we promised we'd come in at. What was the, um, did you get a rough cost on those two items, Joe? Probably be about $460,000 total. So another 60000 uh, uh, for those two improvements? The concrete's going to be a lasting improvement to the stadium. The paint, it'll get old. But the floor of the concrete where we're going to walk on, it'll never get old. And in the, in the budget, you'll see that there's some, quite frankly, some requirements that are being made for on the third base side bleachers, we're having to make those a little easier accessibility for folks like me who can't walk and got old. And so that should have been a maintenance item a long time ago. It's in the, it's in the budget for the renovation. It's an appropriate place for it, but we could have swapped that money out. And, uh, but it was just as important to have people be able to facilitate getting into the bleachers that it was what they walk on. Well, I, I agree. I mean, it's been years since the city's really dumped any significant money into Pat Thomas, and I think it's time, I think it's time that, that we did do this. Um, you know, we've owned the stadium since about 1937. This is 2021. It's appropriate. It'll be the last time it'll happen in my lifetime. So uh, that's maybe a good or bad thing, but we are grateful for this opportunity. We appreciate this, the opportunity to serve the city. And like I said, we think Pat Thomas is uh, worthy uh, as being part of the city. I'd like to see us put the additional 60,000 and make these two other improvements and, and just try to do this absolutely the right way. Yeah, yeah, don't give up on my museum either.
Uh, just got, just, just for the record, not to be argumentative, but that estimate number was 80 for those improvements. Sir? It's 80. It was an extra 80. Well, it was just a little bit. <laughs> just, so, just so we're procedurally correct okay. if you choose yeah, I to think it was the last. No, I, the, not argument, but we owned the stadium since about 1937, and this will probably be the last time in my lifetime that it gets renovated, even though we did it in 80. Yeah, yeah I think I'm in. Only a little money. Well, well we, got, we got a motion on the floor for 400000 that someone wants we to do, in that motion to do something different. Or uh, we have any more discussion on, on this item. And, I, and I'm just going to say, um, you know, for, for me, I think when Tyler and, and John came first um, to us with a presentation, we sent them to the staff to, to work uh, the issues with Pat Thomas because it was kind of a throw it at us, let's get it done. Commission, I think, was gracious to to look at it uh, without even having a whole lot of deliberation on it. So we sent it to the staff, staff work. And so um, to come back and then say, let's put 80 more thousand in. And then and, and in my understanding, the, the building, I didn't know the church was not using it or we weren't using it for the health clinic anymore. Um, but to say six months, and I know how six months work, it, they will be there for 20 years. Um, Man, we'll, be having it, we'll have the same debate at the city council. How do you get the baseball museum out of the cultural arts building? So. Um, I think that's a whole nother discussion at a whole nother time, but I think right now we should be discussing the $400,000 that's on the table unless somebody wants to amend that motion. And, yeah, and we, we started at a much lower number. We, we, originally this was a, I don't know, 200000 we were talking about, and now we're at four hundred. And how much private funds have been raised for this project? For, for, for Pat, how, how much private funds have been raised for Pat Thomas to over the years? To the best of my knowledge, there have been no private funds raised for this particular project, nor has anybody requested that from the city. I did talk about it. There were certain items that we could, given the opportunity, that was never addressed. Right. And I'm just, I was just a question. I, I mean, I think it's, it's something that, that should be considered. I mean, you I, know, I couldn't, it's, I couldn't it's, agree more with you. see other areas doing that. So, I mean, I wouldn't expect certainly the, the bulk of the funds, just, you know, but we're not talking about that. And I will, and just, just on the, the museum, we had a master plan done in that whole area, and, and that's already, that, that's part of the master plan, and it's, it's a parking lot, because we need more parking for, for both the stadium and for the community building, so um, we've already got one museum that maybe we've got to talk about in Leesburg, it's not being used, so uh, I don't Just know. plant that, a seed. Another one. But I appreciate you always asking for Just something. plant so. a seed. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Because yeah. once the building's gone, it's gone. I mean, I, I would just say this. It's been a long time since we put any money into Pat Thomas. Uh, I do think it's a centerpiece of the city. I think it's a centerpiece of the county, to, to be honest. And obviously, I think it definitely plays right into the master development of Venetian Gardens. And uh, yes, I agree. And I do appreciate the commission, you know, doing the $400,000. But I think if we're talking about another 60000 or what have you to, to finish up the additional improvements, I, I'd like to, to see us just add the additional money and get this project done the way it needs to be done. I mean, the way, you know, everything else we've done down here at Venetian Guards, I don't think it's that big a deal to add the additional monies to, to just finish up Pat Thomas, especially in light of, like I said, it's been years since the city's put any improvements back into that stadium. And plus, since we're looking at possibly making this more of a multi-purpose venue, I, I think we should have the, the the proper handicap parking and everything else that Chuck's talking about. I just think we, that just needs to be done. Is the uh, the additional eighty thousand? Uh, if we don't do it now, are those projects that he's talking about? If we come back to this in six months, a year, and say we really need this done, is it going to cost us more then, or is you know, as part of the renovations going on, is it now's the time to do it? Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me answer that and, and give you some more info. Um, a, I don't think that number is going to go crazy one way or the other to make those improvements later down the road. They're basically concrete improvements, so they could be added later. Um, and those numbers are probably, you know, depending on where construction market goes. And, right. Right. Okay, right. So 80 grand. Um, if you do it now, however, that probably does make it a little more constructional sequence. And then if, if you do make an amendment to the motion for the 80 grand, I'd ask for a little bit of leeway where we take it. And I would put out these three suggestions. Number one would be rollover money from the dock project. Two would be we've got some interest earnings that you can probably tap. 
and then three would be reserve monies. So it, it's really a priority issue. I, you know, I don't think it's a financial issue per se. So if you want to do the extra money, that's how we would wing it. And, and essentially the trade-off is you do this project, another project that we don't know of at the moment is delayed. We talked about uh, using this for other, you know, other uh, venues, another venues, but other events, uh, like, you know, say a concert. The Buffett uh, concert. Would, this, would, this, would these well. improvements be utilized? I guess I don't fully understand. I mean, I think I know what you're talking about. You're, but would this, would this benefit, say, example, a concert there? Would this, I yes. mean, I understand the, uh, the parking, but the concrete you're pouring, I believe, for tents or? Inside the fence. Oh, inside yeah. the fence. Inside the fence it's from the location of the, extending the fence out closer to the road, and currently there's a grass dirt area. Yes. That would be concreted, and it would, the asphalt would all be done. Okay, and I is apologize, that, I, never saw, I never saw a plan on it. That's first base confused. line, is that what you're talking about? No, okay. from, um, third third base, from third. roughly from the concession stand, it's actually about 25 yards north east of the concession stand at the beginning of the edge of the stadium where the up ramp goes, all the way around the front of the stadium. Oh, okay, so the, the stadium, not the baseline. Right. Oh, no, no, all the way around the front of the stadium. So, where the, right, right I now. I understand. Right. I got it. Yeah, we, there's that kind of fence some is crepe in myrtles. The, the and chain things. Lanes, it's yeah. right be, So that fence right now is up behind those crepe myrtles. So right. with the new wrought iron fence that gets attached to the, the giant gateway, right. that that rod, the chain link goes away and the wrought iron comes in and it gives them about 30 feet in front of the stadium entry. So they basically want to concrete that, probably keep the crepe myrtles or some type of landscape. We have a we'll landscape plan later. in effect. Yeah, okay. And so it creates more of a promenade. It's it's a nice improvement. I, I just got one question. Why haven't we seen the landscape plan of any of this stuff? We vote, I'm, I'm voting in the dark. And I hear what you're saying, it's by for first base lines and the concrete, but I mean, why haven't we seen? Well, you've seen, you, A, we're trying to get this done in the budget year and then get everything started for baseball season by February, March. Two, we have shown you concepts with the painting schemes and those type of things. And there is some stuff in the, in the packet of what the wrought iron fence looks like and the gateway looks like. And so what got cut out was just basically the concrete areas. I don't, and I don't know if a picture really helps with that. I think we explained it pretty well tonight. And then landscaping, you know, we're not talking about major landscaping issues here. So we're talking about keeping no. crepe myrtles and doing some different stuff. But basically what you're doing is you're just, you're putting a concrete area inside that larger gateway. So now you're probably gonna have about 75 to 100 feet from the building back. That's all concrete where people can gather and conjugate. You can set up tents, you can set up vendors and you, you just create a nicer promenade around the entryway into the stadium. So I mean, if we spend, if we, if we rat and we start doing drawings and that kind of stuff, I think we explained it pretty well. Then we're just, we're spending more dollars to draw out something that's pretty conceptually easy. And I mean, I've seen a, a AutoCAD guy draw me a, a, that's what a, we, a, a Do drum. you have the picture in the packet? We can, we can dig it was packet. Yeah, there's it's, one, it's one in, picture in the packet. There's a one page, no, really, but it's just kind of the gateway. Uh, 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 say Pat Thomas. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a picture of, of a landscape or anything minutes. going to the, to the side. Yeah, yeah just to. This is just but a you, you help me, Al. I mean, I, I do understand it now, and I, I know I confused Chuck I, because I had not seen the plan. I did not know. I wasn't clear and what the, you were talking about. And the landscape plan isn't major. I mean, we're talking about the yeah. probably keeping the existing crepe myrtles with boxes around them, yeah. and then probably you know so, the perennials yeah. in front. So you know, my question was. Would this benefit the stadium for other events? Which I think the answer is yes. If we had a Absolutely. concert there, people could use this as well. It becomes usable space for all for all for all the intended for, uses. Okay. okay, okay. I, I actually like it. I get, you know, I try to be fiscally responsible, but uh, I do believe in doing projects right. You know, I, I said that about the pool, and you know, if we're going to do Pat Thomas, I I say let's do it right. Yeah, the com commissioners. Public comment, and I'm gonna say before we vote, I'm I'm, I'm gonna vote no just because I don't like last minute throw at 250 to turn to 400 now 480,000. So I'm I'm good for 400 because that's what we agreed to. But I'm I'm not I'm not comfortable coming up and, and, and yeah we can say I explained the concrete on the side well, but if I'm going to 80,000 dollars, I don't think a, a AutoCAD drawing of what it looks like it should have been too much to offer. So, uh, and I think we shouldn't start a precedent where we just come on the microphone and we just 
put eighty thousand dollars in any budget to do it right or do it wrong. I just think um, we should have a, a better handle on when we get in a presentation that it should be done at a level that I, I come tonight to vote on four hundred thousand. Now I'm at four eighty. Nothing against Chuck, because I tell you, you ask you can ask for four hundred thousand extra. It's up to me to say yeah or nay. I just don't think that's a. a, a I want to make sure that you're not mad at me for asking for more. Well, I don't have a problem with you asking. It's up to me to say yeah or no. I'm okay so, with that. So, I'm okay and, with that too. I just and, and, I, and I'm just saying for me, I, I take kind of offense to come up tonight to vote on 400, and then because we have to throw it out, we put them back in, and then we tell the commission to vote eighty thousand dollars more for three part handicap park lot and some more concrete. Um, I think that's why we sent it back to come up with a plan to come back to us. We gave a number figure, and because the number figure didn't add up to what I want to do, I come tonight nice and give him eighty more thousand. That's just that's just my personal personal preference, but. Um, that's just me. So I want to make sure that's on the record before I vote, because I'm voting no, not against Pat Tone, but against the, the procedure that took place tonight. Yeah, um, I'd just like to add real quick, because I'm, I'm with the mayor on this one, and the, the problem I have is we said you pick the projects. We're not going to tell you what to do. You can do whatever you want with 400000 Do it. Now 80000 more because these other two things. Well, at this point now, if you want me to spend an eighty grand, i am kind of wanting to say, well, I want to see what you spend the other because maybe there's 80,000 that you picked that I don't agree with and maybe I want these two more than stuff that you picked and th we, that's what we normally do is normally we look at what gets done but this time we said you know we're, we're going we're gonna to trust you guys make the decision bring us back how to spend it and you know if concerts take off you know maybe in a year and that, that really happens I hope it does I'd certainly be willing to reconsider it. But right now, that's kind of a, we don't know how that's going to go. Right. Well, so, I think I did what the yeah. commission asked. Uh, mine is asked for more money, but yeah. Came in at $400,000. Commissioner asked me what I cut out. I told them, gave them you folks the opportunity, as appropriate, to make that decision you deem best at this time. But, but, we, but yeah. we, had, well, we as a body said 400000 I mean, Ms. Connell but, can't say pick what you want. We, we're five commissioners. So we, we voted on $400,000. We sent it back to your committee with Tyler and other guys to say, bring us back the products that you thought will be worth within the $400,000. So, did that. so that's, where we were at to, that's where I was at tonight on, on approving $400,000 for the project that you selected. I just like telling my daughter to go pick a car. She go get a Mazda. She come back with a Mercedes Benz. I said a Mazda. Well, Dad, I really like us. It's blue. Um, that doesn't work for me. And, and, and so, I mean, I get it. Like, as Commissioner Roebuck said, if the other venues take off, great. But they don't take off, we get no concert or one concert a year. Uh, we just spent 80 grand and, on, on a hope and a prayer that, that we, that is untested, untried. So if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, um, then we're not lost 80, 80 grand. Or we come back in, in a year or two and say, let's put the 80 grand in or, or the master plan changes where the cultural lot becomes a museum and we need even more parking. You know, we say knock it down because it just take, took off so much in Venetian Gardens. I would state the vote on 400,000. That's, that, that's kind of where I'm at. So, I, I just want to clarify a couple things. <clears throat> yes, I, I wanted to ask Chuck for, the, for what additional improvements need to be done. I, I don't believe it's fair to say Chuck came up here and asked for $80,000 because I don't think that's what he did. Um, I asked him. I think it was 60. Uh, you said 60. I thought Al said 80. I but, amended it. It's 80. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't think it's fair to say that Chuck came and asked for an additional 80,000. Um, the other thing, too, is we, we arbitrarily came up with $400,000 with no idea what that was going to cover. Uh, I think the, uh, the committee that Chuck put together, I think they've done an outstanding job to figure out what Pat Thomas needed to be done. I think what they're saying now is an additional 80000 to really complete this project the correct way. Um, I get what John's saying. I mean, we did have a list of the improvements, and I don't know you can have a drawing of every single improvement, but I think it's pretty obvious, clear, that handicapped parking spaces are handicapped parking spaces. Additional concrete is additional concrete. I don't necessarily know we need a drawing to see that. Um, so I would say this. I mean, I, I would I, I, I like to see go ahead and give them the extra money, just get it all done at one time. Um, if not, then I guess, you know, we'll come next budget year, I'll ask for the additional money to, to complete this. But, I mean, if we, we already got the contractors on site doing everything else, to me it only makes sense to just finish it all at one time and get a really nice product out of this. Um, I think the additional concrete and everything else with the additional usable space 
is going to be very valuable to a lot of things, to even even the baseball programs, you know, or you know any type of multi-use that may go in there. Um, it's just it's just me. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a number um, to add to this just to finish this project. Any other commission comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Burry. Okay, we're voting on the 400. Yes. That's the motion. There was no there, there was, was no amended, amended motion, motion, so we're voting on 400 now, right? Amend the motion then to the 480. I mean, I I don't want to vote because I just haven't give the extra 80 thousand tonight. But right. you know, I definitely want him to take the 400 tonight. So I like to amend it to. Uh, vote for the 480 tonight to finish this project out the correct way and just be be done with Pat Thomas. Like I said, it's been years since we put any money into this facility. Okay, we have a motion to amend. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Robot? No. Mayor Christian? No. Okay. We'll move to our Thank you, folks. public hearing and routine non routine items. Item six B one is an ordinance. Someone like to introduce it, please. I'll introduce has to be read by title only. Thank you. An ordinance of the City of Leesburg, Florida, further amending the City of Leesburg retirement plan for general employees, adopted pursuant to ordinance number 03-57 as subsequently amended, amending section six, benefit amounts and eligibility, amending section 10, optional forms of benefits, amending section 15, minimum distribution of benefits, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. Any discussion on this item? The second reading will be December 13, 2021. Item 6C1 is a resolution. Someone like to introduce it, please. I introduce it, Spirit, by title only. Thank you. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the City Commission to adopt a downtown building redevelopment grant program, allocate a total of $1 million of initial funding, and providing an effective date. A motion. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> yes, I have a couple things on this. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm all with this program. Um, I have said for years, um, even probably all the way dating back to when Ron Stock was the city manager on redevelopment of downtown, that um, the biggest obstacles the downtown buildings have are the life safety issues, mainly sprinklers, fire alarms, that kind of stuff. So I'm all, I'm all good with this. Uh, my concern is, and I, have, I spoke to Al earlier about this, um, is that I believe we, we need to have some guidelines in place um, of how we're making the determination of how much money, who gets what. I mean, and also, is there any type of requirement once we give someone some money, I understand they won't get the money until the improvements are done, but once they get the money, do they have to own the building for any length of time? Or are we opening this up to investment buying? Somebody's going to come in and buy a building, get a quarter of a million dollars from us, and put the improvements in. And then as soon as the improvements are done and they've got their money, you've got a for sale sign in the, in the front yard. And they're trying to double their money off the city's money. And so we, we still have a vacant building sitting down there with just a for sale sign in it. So I'm, I, what I'm saying is I'm all for this program, but I, I really would like to see us to have the guidelines in place of how we're determining who gets what. Um, they have to own the building for any length of time. I mean, once the improvements are done, they have the city money. Do they have to have tenants in by a certain time, or can they just throw a for sale sign in the front yard? And like I said, it's still sitting there vacant. I just like I said, I would like to see the guidelines on this program put in place and approved before we appropriate the million dollars towards this, this program. And, and I agree, and I, I think I kind of mentioned something similar to Al, is um, when a person gets this money, it should be some type of stipulation 
Um, I don't care if you sell it, but you got to pay the city back their money, just like your prorate. If I give you $100,000, you got 10 years to fulfill this building. You sell it in nine years, you owe us $90,000, or one year owe us $90,000 back. So I think we have to put, and, and you get any kind of grant funding from the state, the county, they're going to prorate your use of the bill. And they, they, if you, I mean, market gets great. And if I, if I got this building for a million dollars, you give me 250,000, somebody wants to offer me $2 million, it, I'm going to sell it, but I also need to pay the city back so we can do this again. Because basically what we're doing, we're making that building more valuable because now if I'm putting a sprinkler system in, I'm putting other things in, your building now becomes more valuable and more attractive to an investor who may not want to put the money in. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I agree with, with Commissioner Cornell and I think whatever mechanism the city staff can come up with to kind of give us some, some teeth in this so we don't have people flipping properties downtown. And if they do sell, we don't want people to say you can't sell, but if you sell, you give the city some of the money back, depending on what year you're selling in, so we can fulfill our obligation to make downtown revitalize. So that would be my only comments on that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, agree. I agree with you on that, Mayor. Just some, just some perspective on why the program was posed to you in the, in the fashion it was. The first and foremost is the leverage to try to get these buildings redeveloped. You'll note in the package that, that the box on eligible buildings is pretty small. So it, it's an, an eligibility is about those 10 buildings on Main Street from Orange to Second Street. And remember, the other criteria for selection is multi-use, multi-story. So right there, that short criteria narrows it down to about 10 buildings in that red window that, that's in the, in the area. Of that, those 10 buildings, probably about two of them, I would suggest wouldn't be funded because they're just not going to. Uh, one, Lifestream, for example, um, and there's a couple other buildings in there that are multi-use, multifaceted now. I don't see uh, them for sale or an immediate need to redo this. So that really gives the commission a lot of autonomy on what you choose to fund or not fund. And so we've gone from eight, 10 buildings now to about six that are probably primed and ready to, to flip currently, I don't mean that in a bad term, to, to be purchased and redeveloped. Um, the Palace is one, 410 West Main is one that's been talked about, um, 215. Uh, West Main is another one that's immediately being looked at by private developers to, to redevelop in, in, the, in that multi-use fashion. So the definition of multi-use as described in the packet, as well as um, the, the downtown master plan is some type of commercial on the bottom, residential up top. And that can be anything, a uh, commercial can be anything that is a, is a commercial activity that's allowed in that downtown um, zoning classification. So that's commercial, that's professional service, so lawyer, doctor, um, that's sales, that's restaurant, commercial. Upstairs or multi-stories, it could be, this, there could be like three stories, so you could have commercial, professional, multi-use. Multi-use, multi-story. Each one of those buildings is different in character. Each one of those buildings is going to have different issues with redevelopment. So the swag there was $250,000. Each of those buildings we've kind of identified in the past and we tried to upgrade it. Some of them have water sprinkler issues. Some of them don't. Some of them have water or electric issues. Some of them don't. So there is a big disparity of zero up to $250,000 because the worst case scenario is some of those buildings are looking at about 100 grand to retrofit with sprinkler. Some of them are looking at about 150 grand to unbundle the old electric and redo and do service upgrades, depending on what type of commercial. 215 is a great example. They may go a commercial restaurant downstairs and need a 600 amp service, which is gonna require them to redo that, that, that meter bus, which requires service upgrade on our side of the meter as well as service grade on their side of the meter. So I, I think everybody wants to see downtown redevelop. We want to see this multi-use concept downtown. We want to see ambiance and creativity downtown. And the, our, our codes for life safety and our codes for electric life safety and our codes for service are, are 
the hair that's breaking the camel's back potentially on redevelopment. So there's the open window. We'll work with you. We're going to look at you case by case. This program runs through the city's manager's office for a purpose so that it, so it gets the city manager's eye and it has to go to several different departments for input, fire, electric, planning and zoning, then back to you. So it's all controlled through the city manager's office and then case. <clears throat> Each grant subsequently going to need um, a, a contract from you all. It, it was my intent that this was a grant, so $250,000. They get that. That's free and clear. That's, they get it after inspection or CO, you know, whichever the project does. That's why we specify. Because if you're going to go in there, you're going to do improvements. You're going to be pulling permits at the building department. That money then is not issued until after CO or a building inspection. So that way the city is guaranteed that those improvements are made. Now therein lies the problem. And, and I'm open to whatever you want to do. And, and two things can happen. We can go back and based on discussion, we can amend the, the program is written, and I can stick a, a, a crawlback provision in there. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned you want to see they need to own and occupy. So developer A comes in, they, we give them 250 post facto in, as reimbursement, and they have to own it for 10 years. And if they sell it before 10 years, then there's a, the, a crawlback. So we can put that provision in there. Um, my suggestion is, at first, I wouldn't put that provision in there. Every one of these things is going to come back to you for a grant agreement. So in the packet, in the process, the, agree, the process kind of flows. We get this, we get this program out on, on the market so that we can advertise it. Um, I've already been contacted by a couple of different local realtors about potential sales where new investors are coming in to buy up these buildings. I would not limit old, new. It, whoever, you know, if a sale is being made contingent on, or the hope that this is that this program is going to happen, they take that at their risk and they also know that they're going to have to come back to the city commission for their grant award. So you guys will be reviewing every single grant. So I would leave that open. But I'd also, um, as these grant agreements come, that's where we take a look at them and that's where you either, A, if you want a standard payback, a prorated share so you prevent flip we can do that I, the, the, I know this is a new thing but m my thought here was the flip in this case I don't think hurts the city because if it's flipped what's getting flipped is a new building that's multi-use that's multi-story so that's a better asset that that increases our tax base now, so on one hand I'm gonna say yay increase tax base when it gets <laughs> flipped because now downtowns earning you some money because the, 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 honest, the honest answer there is uh, the rough house number, you generate about $5.5 million of ad valorem revenue, and downtown is generating about 50000 for you. So if it gets flipped, on one hand, you're going to say, yay, now that, that increment for the district is up. So you want it to be flipped. What the, what, the, what the point of the money is is to encourage redevelopment of these buildings that have blight, that have code issue and to look at them case by case basis. And after we make that first contract, then the, the bar is set on the next contract and the next contract. So the money is set on those levels of, you know, what, what retro for fire suppression you need, what retro for electric you need, and it can range zero to 250, um, and, and, and perhaps even more. But I thought the 250 number was more than reasonable uh, leverage more enticement from the city and then it's fundable um, by the three different funds the downtown CRA has that residual 200,000 the electric and the sewer fund also has that 400,000 isn't a huge hit but cu uh, cumulatively that million dollars of pot money is really enough to get this program going and potentially leverage half of the buildings downtown being redeveloped. So I know a million is a big number, but in the big picture it's not, and the, again, the purpose for redevelopment. So my suggestion would be is tonight is to go ahead and, and approve the program, and if you want a couple extra caveats in there, we can stick them in the program, so we, we, we do that moving forward. 
and do it formally, or you can do it formally in the process, because process, and I started on this, and I'll end with how the process goes and how it comes back before you. So developer comes in, he, 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 he is pejorative, <laughs> he comes in, he makes application. Applications reviewed by my office, we meet with developer. We go over his expenses. There's one open-ended um, line in that application that says provide a spreadsheet of expenses. So it's really simple, right? We, it, we, we get yelled at for being cumbersome in government. So that's a really simple line, provide your expenses. So, so that gets flushed out. That's going to be me or your city manager, whoever, no, no nothing there. But um, that city manager's job there is to flush out those expenses. And, and justify where else are they spending money. So that what else are you doing? We're, we're, we're putting in rooms, we've got drywall expenses, we've got roofing expenses, we've got window expenses. We're gonna spend 750, a million dollars, okay? And here's our 250 to offset those life safety issues. I didn't wanna do it as a grant match, 80-20, because those numbers I think are just gonna be all over the spot. I would tell you that as an administrator of this, uh, yeah, I w I'll be looking for significant input uh, from the business, the, that developer, on what they're doing. And that's, th so, so yeah, it's a little open, it's a little flimsy, and I mean flimsy in an, in, in, in an avenue that it gives us the ability to model this program for what comes before us, but the immediacy is we've got some folks knocking at the door. There's been talk, significant talk, the last six months about folks wanting to start doing multi-use on the multi-stories, and maybe this is a program that leverages that. So A, I would approve it as it is, and then we'll come back to you. So it's submit, review to the commission. You guys say yay or nay and how much. Then we come back and we put a grant agreement together. Then the developer goes off, makes the improvements. Then you pay. So. I'm okay with that because I, I do agree in, th in this scenario we actually want them to sell the buildings because that's the only way we actually get increased Make revenue um, for us which is uh, different and then also we've got some you know maybe people have owned these buildings for maybe even decades that maybe a new owner would be a, a good thing <laughs> um, and some that are investing currently and, and we don't want them to sell but uh, the one thing that I would change in this I'm okay with everything except for I think we should have as part of the ranking criteria some points for um, for money that they're going to put in the building. So not necessarily on this project, but they say, hey, if you give me 250 to do this sprinkler and electric upgrade, I'm going to spend 750 on these other improvements. Well, I'm you know I, I like that a lot better than just give me 250 to do do the improvements. So um, I, I'd like to be upfront about we would like to see them invest in the building and we look more highly on projects. And on that point system, Al, and I know Commissioner Fiesa got something to say, but if you can maybe hit on this. So when they come in, um, I think also the point system, are you going to finish the whole building or the bottom floor? Um, because what happens is I'm going to come in and do the bottom floor for my business. The top two floors don't get finished, but you got life safety. You put the sprinklers in, you put the electric upgrade. Now I'm going to sell it to Jimmy Burry because he's a Sarasota guy, doesn't even care about Leesburg. I said an opportunity for a building that we gave you 250000 and you may have done the bottom floor but not. So I, I think we also should put points in for who's going to come and go from start to finish with this building and say, I would rather get this guy more money, even if it's above the 250 if he's going to complete an entire building for $2 million. Yeah, and, and that, on that one, I don't even think you'd do a phasing plan on that. I think the immediate requirement is that you're making multi-use, multi-story improvements. Okay. So it's not, I'm not fixing the bottom now and commercial now and residential later. It's bottom oh. now, top now. And, and, and I wouldn't, so I'll just make that more clear in, in okay. the, but that, that's, that I, I'll make, I'll, I'll multi-use, multi-story was kind of the theme, so I'll just drum that out. It's, it's not phased, it's, uh, you do it now. <laughs> well, I, say, I think that kind of leads into what I was, I've been saying all along, is I'd, I'd like to see these guidelines in place and approved of, of, of what we're going to do before we start giving out money, and I think they need to be improved and not not looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. I think one guideline fits every building we're going to 
look at awarding money down there. That's why I say I like to have the guidelines in place and approved oh, yeah. before we start issuing any money to anybody. That way everybody plays by the same rules down, downtown. <laughs> well, well, John knew I would be vocal on this one only because I'm very pro downtown. Uh, obviously, I think it's a great, great program. Um, I'm glad I kept quiet because my really my only comment was, you know, being sure it's distributed fair and equitably. But after hearing, um, you know, the discussion now on kind of a point system, I, I would probably say that's the better way to go. Um, you know, the whole idea here is to uh, encourage more investment downtown. So. Uh, I do have some concerns on it being distributed fair and equitably, um, but I'm a little torn now. Um, one more comment. You, know, early, you said the, the write-up said 10 buildings. Al kind of whittled, whittled it down to six. Um, I was tempted to say, you know, six buildings at 200,000, a million two, but I'm going to withdraw that concept based on this point system. I kind of like this point system better, uh, triggering more investment downtown. And downtown needs this. You know, I've, I've said it for, gosh, 15 years, uh, looking at all these second floor buildings sitting empty. Um, you know, it's time to make something happen downtown for all the right reasons. Yep. Anything, Mr. Burr? No, I, uh, I can see both sides of the coin here. Um, quite personally, for me, I think uh, we need to make a decision that's going to improve downtown. And offering these grants is is it the avenue. Uh, I'm not here to decide who gets to make money and who doesn't get to make money. Uh, if someone is gonna flip after the initial investment with the grant, it is gonna increase the property value. The city of Leesburg is going to realize more revenue. So, uh, you know, as Al said, them selling the building to a new investor is not necessarily a bad thing. and. A lot of the buildings have had the same owners for a long time and nothing's going on. So I think it's a good idea. I do agree that uh, having a point system a little better spelled out for us um, would be a good thing. So I'm, I'm leaning towards asking how, how long to develop a little more clear point system. Al, what, are, what, you know, can we do that in two weeks or is that a, yeah, no, these are easy fixes. So, so what, could we table this that's until what the I, next meeting? That's what I'd suggest. Just yeah. go ahead and table it. So I'd like it. to make a motion to table it Same. for our next meeting and, and have, uh, have a little more clear point system explained. Okay. We got a motion, we got a table. Can, can I ask one more question? Um, do we know who is interested in this program? I mean, do we have an idea? I mean, is this money already? spoken for is it enough money um no it I, I don't think it covers all of downtown that the the 250 is you know eight to ten buildings downtown i can't remember the exact number two to three of those eight to ten probably you won't see apply for grants because they're functional buildings like live stream so it's probably six to eight buildings at 250 a crack a maximum you know it might not be a two hundred fifty thousand dollar award um, so a, a million dollars in the in the in the fund takes a big swing out of starting the program. That's it. And I think it gives us a chance if, if, and, it, and if you it's might hot. It works. Yeah, if yeah, it works it, good, it, and I think Al will come back. We come back, and you pro. I don't I, see I it going over two million. You know, at eight. You know, maybe maybe down the road you might need to put another seven fifty or five hundred in there. But but a million gets it started, and we see who swings. Right now. The two potential developers have been in my office in the past <laughs> couple weeks on two different buildings. I know we got a table, but that, that was my whole point of the, <coughs> if you sell it, funds come back to this, to this program because my, the market is really hot. We know the market is hot. We're going to get people that may, who've had it for 10 years, they can sell it tomorrow. Another guy buys it in, in, a, in a year. But the market crashes. That guy's gonna be help holding the bag. So, if this million dollars, if I if I put two fifty, give it to Roebuck, 
he improves his bill in a million bucks, sells for two million, then he has to get a city at two fifty. He's not going to care because they're going to make seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now that million dollars goes back to the two fifty goes back to a million dollars. Then we can expand it to another street as opposed to coming back to the city council and say, hey, taxpayer, give us another million dollars for private business. So that was my thing. If you can sell it and make money, I agree. Yeah. If you make a two million a million dollar profit, the city in, in a year or two years, you get a city a portion of that money back because it's a grant. And I helped Dan improve his building so it make it marketable. So that was my thing to, to keep the fund going. If someone now if you sell for hold for ten years, of course you go walk away and you become an investor and leave Bert, you're part of our city. But if I'm an investor coming to your city to make a dollar, I sell it, make my money, I'm gone. Why not get that money back to Leesburg taxpayers and go to the next street, Market Street, or find another building? We can get it through that as well. If the market crashes, nobody's going to sell or buy, you know, a, a multi-story downtown building in, in a bad market. So that that was my whole philosophy in, in getting funding back from from there. And then we say the tax value goes up unless a nonprofit buys one of these buildings and uses it for their dormitory for the kids. Uh, then that's off your tax roll. So so it may not be the taxes, and so that may be I don't know how Al's going to preclude that, but it may be where nonprofits buy three of these buildings and then now your tax base that we were <laughs> banking on now has disappears and we do have a big nonprofit that buys downtown now the, buildings. The, the, the program said <laughs> private. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, okay. I was thinking about not Okay, shop. thank you. Bring that just, back until, I, until, I buy, until he fix up and I buy from him. <laughs> Then I was Fix the was parameters and let's talk about it in two weeks. <laughs> so yeah. that's what that, so that, that's just my comments for you to tweak it. We can talk about it. So yeah. roll call, anybody's for we roll call the well, table. Yeah, I'll go work it out. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. <laughs> we get out for homework. Excuse me. Um, BC2, resolution would like to introduce it, please. Introduce Sassy Roebuck, I will Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, <clears throat> appointing one member to the Greater Leesburg Community Redevelopment Agency to fill a vacant remaining four-year term set to expire December 31st, 2023, and providing an effective date. Okay, so we have three applications. Uh, Mr. Ackerman here. So we'll do, we'll give you, the, the commission, okay, give two minutes to kind of tell us what they're going to do and then tell us about yourself and why you want to serve on the Greater Leesburg CRA. We've got Mr. Ackerman, Mr. Reisman, and Mr. Shan Shannon. Yes, sir. Evening. Good evening. So uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Darren Ackerman. My wife and I moved to Leesburg about three years ago. Um, I stood up here and did the same thing last time this uh, position came open. So uh, I feel like I made a sell sold myself a little bit short last time. So uh, I'm a superintendent traveling. I've worked all over the US. Uh, my last three projects have been in excess of $800 million. Did the Atlanta Brave Stadium in Atlanta. I did the MD Anderson Cancer Center and I'm currently doing the new Baptist Tower in Jacksonville. Each one of these projects have been a city's worth of infrastructure. Okay, I'm reading through the budgeting <clears throat> on the meeting minutes from the last time. There's been a large allocation of budget towards infrastructure for downtown, as I've heard th throughout this entire thing. Um, a lot of that stuff is VE, so value engineering. It has a lot to do with project planning. It has a lot to do with logistics, right? So the ROI for the city, the return on your investment is in the dollar and cents in the contracts. Getting those items engineered correctly, getting the constructability done in a manner that is logistically able to save the city money right to get the engineering done to, to work with the architects and stuff like that i've worked hand in hand with city county medical you name it architects engineers to get the best product for the best price for a lot of different owners i work for a cm group we are project managers and superintendents only we don't self-perform work we are pretty much the middleman the owner if you would say as the city would be for the subcontractors right so the subcontractors do everything through us and then we present that to the owner. Um, I think I could be a huge asset to this, right? To have somebody with that state of mind be able to look at these different projects, to be able to, to look over things and maybe from a new light, a, a fresh set of eyes. So my family, we are vested in Leesburg, right? We moved here, we own a house. You could almost throw a rock and hit it from here, right over there in Palomar Park. So we plan on staying here for a while. I love the improvements that Leesburg has done. I think it looks great. 
I think a lot of people are coming to the Leesburg area and the improvements that are happening are, are, are making that happen. So uh, that's about it. I, I would just like to be a part of it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Alan Reisman. Good evening, commissioners, uh, city manager. My name is Alan Reisman. I'm a born and, born and raised right here in Leesburg. Uh, I feel like this would be a next, good next step for me to learn more about Leesburg and the CRAs. I currently serve on the Leesburg City Commission Board and the Airport Board. Um, just looking to see Leesburg continue to grow and prosper. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Dalton Shen, is he here? I was not able to get a hold of him. Okay. So and I see his um, application. He doesn't check any committee he wants to serve on, so we just put him on. He had um, emailed me before okay. a couple months back and asked to be put on whatever came open. Okay. But I was unable to contact him to make sure he was here tonight. Okay. So, commissioners, um, any your pleasure? You, you like to ask questions, or you want to make a recommendation at this time for the resolution? And, and one question for Fred. Fred, I know uh, Mr. Reisman. I just noticed he's on the airport advisory board. He can serve on both of these boards. Yes, the airport advisory board is purely advisory and non-compensated, so okay. technically he can do that. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, Commissioner, what's your pleasure? I would make a motion to recommend um, Alan Reisman um, to uh, the disposition. I second I that. Second. Any discussion? I just make sure because, uh, and I support that. Um, uh, but uh, the CRA board's non compensated as well, correct? Yes. Yes, but it makes certain decisions uh, that are binding. Right, but the resign, resign to, to run it's doesn't apply. It's not purely advisory. But resign to run doesn't apply to CRA board. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I, I believe it saying. does. It does. Yes. And oh, that would be a time of. Qualifying? Yes. Which is? <clears throat> July. I didn't even think about this. Right? <laughs> Sorry, Alan. I would have asked you. July. July. I mentioned July. this beforehand, but when you just mentioned the qualified. thing. Yeah. So if you're planning on running, you actually would have to resign from this in July. So just just keep that in mind. I'm, I'm still in favor of this, but don't want to trip anyone up. Uh, and it's happened in, uh, I think, right. a school board race a few years back. So. Right. So everybody good? Just, I, that brings me a question. <laughs> Alan, I don't want to give up any state secrets. It's a, it's, it's public record. But Alan did pre-file. So once you file, is that when Not resign to run comes in, or is it still July? There's nothing in the statute about pre-filing, and I'm not sure what that is okay. technically in a legal sense. So that, so yes, he can be on the board until July. That's how I would take your. Yeah, I mean, he has to actually formally qualify. People can pre qual pre-file and then not file when it's time. That's happened right. before. Okay. okay. I was just going to comment. They're, they're both qualified. I wish we could put both of them on there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it sounds like Alan will get the nod. And, sound, you know, I hope he wins. And, you know, a year from now, we'll nominate Mr. Ackerman at that time. Roll call, please. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Commissioner Burry? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Reisman and Mr. Ackerman. Please hang around. Um, your, your time is coming. I, I can almost feel it. Um, thank you for, for your willingness to want to serve our, our, our city. Uh, it, just, let, just let you know so you don't go back because you're certainly very qualified. But Alan's been coming to every one of our commission meetings for like two years and <laughs> sitting through them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> So I see Alan holding his hands up saying 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, information reports, financial reports as of September 2021. Anything to report, Mr. Minner? Yes, sir. All right. City attorney items. Nothing tonight. Thank you. City manager items. No, sir. Thank you. Roll call, Commissioner please. Roebuck. Yeah, so um, the, the only item I have is I'm a little concerned with um, the, the way that the, the lakefront money was allocated and maybe maybe it's just a misunderstanding I, I i sent an email to dr amory this morning but I, I haven't um had a response back yet and when we talked about funding lakefront um 
my understanding is we were funding lakefront tv like the city itself for some capital improvements relating to some stuff that she needed and and that was reiterated to me with a phone call that i had with her last week when she was concerned about the money was that it wasn't supposed to go to fachi bella it was supposed to go to some sort of capital fund and then i saw the emails going to fachi bella and i think that was certainly never my intent was to give her personally the money that i thought it was for lakefront and if it is then i think we have to um, which I'd be opposed to, but but if we do, I think we have to have a conversation about where that money comes from because I do not believe that the the American Recovery Act will allow us to give a business who had, I mean, w the, the the funding comes from us and they didn't have an economic impact during COVID because our funding never changed. So I don't think we can use American Recovery Act. We could we could decide from the general fund, hey, we want to give you personally fifty grand, but um, I said maybe it's a misunderstanding. I'm, I'm okay with the money going to Lakefront TV, but. That that's not what happened. Well, you, anything you want to add on that? I think this is a trippy, tr tricky topic. Um, in my impression was that when, and, and no personal issues here, so just frank talking. My personal opinion as your manager, when the commission approved that fund funding, it was Lakefront TV. Lakefront TV is not Fatchy Bella. There is a clear division. That's not made up. That's not a trick to keep money from flowing, but I think that's a clear difference. Lakefront TV is the city's brand of publication. We own that. That's, that's our brand. We contract with Fatchy Bella to run that brand for us. I think when you all made the motion to give Lakefront TV, I think the thought was that Lakefront TV is getting 50 grand. In conversation with you all post facto individually, and in conversation that I've had with Dr. Anna Marie since then, she expressed to me that her intent was, in fact, that Fachi Bella should get paid $50,000 for their impact from COVID because of COVID-related expenses. My opinion is that the expense is correct. Fachi Bella did do additional programming for COVID, educational programming, these type of things, which is part of the grant. To be on the safe side, if it is the commission's desire to, to, pay, like, to pay Fachi Bella, which I think most of you have indicated to me it was, then I would just flip funding and I can, I can make that transaction happen easily, but just move in some financial blocks. Uh, so the situation is, as long as the commission is okay with the expense and that you thought that the money was going to Fachi Bella, okay, they've been issued that check and I'll change the allocation. If you have issue that Fachi Bella got that money and you thought it was going, as Commissioner Roebuck did, to the Capital Improvement Fund for Lakefront TV, then let me know. Then we, we have some talking to do and, and I issued a 50 grand that the commission didn't want. I didn't think that conversation was clear. Again, in my conversations with you, I did issue it based on our private conversations because I think your intent that, you, that everybody but not picking on you, Commissioner Roebuck, <laughs> but everybody but Commissioner Roebuck <laughs> felt, yeah, it was Fauci Bella money, so I cut the check. I, would, I think that... Hey, one, one business can lead, one private business can for $50,000 if you like. And we had a grant program for businesses, and Burlington Hotel will apply for that, and that would have been appropriate. And I have no problem giving money to Lakefront TV, and that's the conversation that we had in this chamber. We never had a conversation $50,000. And I think we'd have a whole lot of other businesses that were much more affected by COVID that actually lost revenue, not created some infomercials on COVID, which were nice, but there is no way 50,000, that, that's, their, that's their job is to produce public access TV about what's going on, which the last two years was COVID. So th that's what we're paying them to do. And they're doing a great job and have been supportive. And we gave them a no bid. We didn't put them out to contract. Uh, out to bid. We renewed their contract. I supported that. So again, like Pat Thomas, I'm not knocking Lakefront TV. I think they do a fantastic job. But we never talked about giving 
a private business $50,000. So if people want to do that, I think it's important that we have that on the record, that that's what we're doing, that we like this business, so here's 50 grand. So commission, um, this is roll call. Do you want to bring this back up at the next meeting to have Al give us some details or you? It, this, is, this is a kind of, we did this, not we're gonna do this. Is that correct? The 50,000? 50 has been paid. So I'm, I, I'm yeah, in agreement we never voted on that. We never, we never voted to do that. And the, I, in private conversations with the city manager don't constitute authority for the city to do stuff we never voted on in public. And I think that given our long relationship and the fact that two hours before he sent that email, Dr. Amory told me on the phone, my intent was never for this to go to Fachi Bella. I wanted a capital fund for this that she would be understanding and keep the money. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an advance on the money that we pay you because we pay you well more than fifty thousand dollars a year, and you keep that now. We just paid you ahead of time, and we're going to take fifty thousand dollars and we're going to let you spend it on upgrading all this equipment that you want to do, and it's going to go to Lakefront TV. And you know, I, I think that you know we're, we're all adults. We, we work well together. We've had a long relationship. She does a great job. I think that um, that's a, a conversation that's had, and I. I my hope is it was a misunderstanding because it's literally what she told me. Commissioner Peterson. Well, well I, when I voted to approve it, um, it was based on the understanding that, you know, she was incurring additional expenses. The exa one of the examples I was given was, you know, they don't have to break their equipment, you know, down at the city hall. You know, here, there's, every time there's an event, they have to break their equipment down, set it back up. Um, that, you know, I don't, I don't have that number quantified, but that combined with the uh, educational issues, you know, I supported the 50,000. When Al brought up his concerns over how you fund it, my, you know, I quickly just said, you know, I'm okay with it, Al, but the commission appears to have, you know, the commission did approve it. Um, if, it's not, if it doesn't qualify under American Recovery Act, my example to Al was, you know, since we already, since we did approve it, we communicated it to her. Take fifty thousand out of the general fund and, and take the reimbursement from a million to a million fifty. That's how you know, you know. But to me, we you know, once we committed, I don't want to pull the money now that we committed it. I do respect Commissioner Roebuck's comments. I don't think she would be that uptight about moving it to the capital side. I mean, either way, it benefits. But I guess I just hate to change the rules on her after the fact. Um, that, that's my point. Yeah, man, thank Ms. Connell. This is, this is roll call, Mr. Robux roll call. We didn't bring up a. I, I don't have anything. All right. Okay, well, I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm going to be uh, objecting to, to this, uh, spending the American Recovery Money Act on this. Um, I, I don't think it qualifies. There was not, there's no way moving equipment is $50,000 of economic impact when we have actual businesses that lost revenue. I think it's insulting that we would say that, you know, <laughs> moving equipment because you're our friend, you get 50 grand, the one private business in, in Leesburg, because we don't want to ask about putting in a caliphate. So it's very disappointing, and I'll be, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be, be submitting my, my comments to, to, to the people administering the, the grant funds. I think the city's mi misappropriating funds. So, that, but uh, with that, that's all my roll call. So, so Al, did she even tell you what she spent the money on, or? Yeah. Yes, Dr. Anne Marie submitted to me an invoice on programming and set up and breakdown expenses that totaled about $53,000. Yeah, my understanding was what was communicated to her was you know, if we were going to fund operational shortfalls, whatever you want to call it, she had to document it. I haven't seen the numbers. I trust Al documented it properly. If, if, and my understanding was if he, whatever she showed in, in operational losses or shortfalls, he would fund and the difference. Because we approved 50,000, the difference would go for the capital improvements. Um, I didn't see the numbers. I was told that she documented 50, so I feel like we're fine under the intent of the, uh, the program. I, I, I guess I never knew there was these strict guidelines on the program. I thought they were a little looser. Um, I've, I've, seen the, I've seen money spent a lot worse than this uh, by government and even this, this, own, you know, this program alone, but uh, I do respect Commissioner Roebuck's concerns, but uh, I, I think Lake TV does a good job. I, I said from the beginning, Al, just find a way to get her the money, you know, and 
You know, the proper way. The but proper they're not way. documenting what they're doing. This. this is this is money going to the business's personal bank account. That's where this is going. This is not going to, to, to for new stuff. And my point is programming is their job. That is what we pay them to do every year. Are How you can her, her, say programming is this extra expense caused by COVID are when her, it's her literally their paid, job. Uh, how are her employees paid? Which entity pays her employees? They're Fachi Bella employees. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. So, so Al, just on Commissioner Robot's concern, um, for the city of Leesburg's sake, would it be um, wise of us to find 50000 off from somewhere else uh, for the sake of all argument, since the other commission kind of don't want to take the money from her, take it out of the American Recovery Act funds. So Foster Bella, wherever is getting money from general fund, gas fund, then we deal with that later on. Um, Cause I mean, I just hate as Commissioner Roebuck is, you know, he's saying that we gave money kind of almost illegally um, against the grant parameters. Um, and, 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 and maybe we tasked Dr. Anna Marie on this year to seek out outside funding to make up the $50,000 um, back to the city's general fund through other programming methods. Um, we're doing programming for other nonprofits. Maybe we don't give it free. Maybe we ask them to contribute towards their programming other governmental entities. Uh, we kind of give her that charge to make this $50,000 up in the course of doing business. Not that we say you got to do it, but in the course of your doing business, if City of Claremont wants to do a program, they want to give us five grand. That five grand doesn't go to, to the general fund. It goes back to recoup the $50,000 where we getting this money from. Not just I think the question in there is, is, in my opinion, is the money being spent within the guidelines of the American Recovery Act? Okay. The answer to that is partially. Dr. Anna Marie submitted a, an invoice that documented expenses that amounted about $53,000. Of that invoice, it's my opinion that it was about half, roughly it was about $22,000, was directly related to COVID programming. I believe that that is a, a justifiable expense. I think the city can clearly say that those were additional programs that Fachi Bella put together for us. Those were additional programs that directly dealt with education, information, and ways to combat COVID. So I think those specific programmings were good. I would say the uh, breakdown and, and startup of this building versus the other building, you may be able to hang your hat on that. Um, I think that one's more gray. I think if the city wants to provide the check as I gave to, to authorize, then yeah, I would, I would probably squeeze half of that invoice into into cash and if that and and the the, the question that that i posed to this body which you guys can clarify tonight was i think as long as your intent was that fachi bella in some sort of fashion was getting the money then okay then then i think you, you split it up and I, that's what you guys indicated to me i asked for individual clarification I think Commissioner Roebuck is correct in that as well. That was individual clarification that wasn't public. Um, I operated on your individual clarification. Um, so to clear that up, if, it, it, if this body thought that Fauci Bella should get the check, I would, I would shift the portion that I deem questionable into cash and, and shift some financial blocks around, which won't be difficult because there's a portion to, to, to convolute the matter, the, the city paid ourselves one million dollars, one million two dollars out of the CARES Act, uh, out of the recovery money. There was the formulatic approach that the federal government said to that, that each government has an expense due to COVID. So our Fachi Bella expense, as they're saying to you, is part of that. That I would say that that Fachi Bella expense is embedded and that $1 million that we paid ourselves rightfully out of the grant, which we put into cash. So that's how you shift that block and you don't have an impact. So if this body felt it was okay, I would suggest the check's been sent to Fachibella. I think the intent that most of you have expressed 
is that, yep, that's where you thought it was going. So half gets funded directly from the grant, half gets funded from the cash that was already, that was recovery money. Does that make sense? And just for the record, there's, just so you guys know, because a, a Dan or Commissioner Roebuck, Mayor, I think you guys were the only ones who were on board when we did the Fachi Bella contract. So we did that going on eight years ago now, I think. We brought Fachi Bella on right before I was hired. And so, long story short, when we, modif we, when we modified the, the, the contract a couple of times with Fachi Bella, there was, a, there, wa there was a drive in this contract that Lakefront TV becomes sustainable from doing advertisements and bringing different businesses and then those businesses who use the, the local cable access to advertiser use or whatever, that pays for the production of Lakefront TV. That concept never really worked. It was never destined to work. Um, so as we, as Dr. Anna Marie did get some success and some other opportunities came up with the county, with Beacon College, those numbers did start to increase. And so I may be mixing the timeline up, but there was a little bit of the quid pro quo that we substantially increased the Fachi Bella contract. We doubled it and we changed the composition of how of who kept this money that was flowing in from partners that Fachi Bella got. And then the concept changed from a split of new revenue that was, that was coming in to we take the revenue and we put it into a general fund restricted account that funds capital improvements to the program. So for example, I think Beacon College pays the city, not Fachi Bella, 20 grand a year, Part of the con 175 of the contracting is to do programming for Beacon, and then that 20 grand goes into the the cap, the, what we're calling the capital fund, so that when Dr. Anna Marie needs a new TV camera or better sound equipment or whatever, we take it out of that fund. And so her efforts are seen that when she brings in these partners, that that helps with equipment and improving studio issues and and helps the production costs. So that's the fund, and so. That's side note information. I think the question before you tonight is if you're good with how it's done, I would split it between cash and all recovery money. If you're totally upset and felt misled, then you need to yell at me and bring the expense back to the commission. Dan, you all right there? No, I'm all right. <laughs> Can we vote on it now for, docu for documentation purposes? Or does it have to be on the agenda? Fred. I, I would say you can, but. Do I have to put it on the agenda or can we vote? Uh, I would put it on the agenda simply because for due process reasons that needs to be, all interested parties need to be present to okay. comment. And, and I asked, I asked Alice and Al, put this on the agenda Monday. The commissioner, no, the, the commissioner yeah, is correct. I, I unilaterally made that he, he's correct. I made that decision. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I supported that decision. Yeah. And, and I'm okay with it. And, and I, I don't think um, it probably wouldn't change, but I think Commissioner Roebuck is right. It should be um, on, on the table. And if we all vote yeah, and if we get one no vote, I think it still be something we can talk about and move forward on it. Um, if y'all okay with that, I'm, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I think. Uh, you know, Commissioner Roebuck, I think he, he is right in his assessment. Dr. Emery, you know, we, we probably said Lakefront TV and we probably should have said Bella Fies. I think that's nobody's fault. 
Um, I just think we just probably missed up late front and Bella Fasha or whatever. Uh, um, but I, but I, I mean, I don't have a problem either, either way, whatever the commission would like to do, I, I don't have a problem with either way. I, I mean, I want, you know, whether Commissioner Roebuck, he, he's, a, he's a strong guy. He can handle being 4-1 against a 3-2 against him. But I think um, it's a procedure that I think he's um, more in favor of. I, I did want to say, too, also that. Yes, sir. I mean, I did speak. I, I spoke to Al about this, and I told Al I was fine with, with, with doing what we had agreed to do. So I don't want, you know, Al to get thrown out there um, because he did speak to me, and I told him I, I was good with it. I will admit, you know, looking back on the meeting, hindsight, there probably was a little bit of confusion, but uh, reiterating, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I was fine with it. I don't fully understand the act. I, you know, I'm not an expert on it. I actually have only read very high level things about it. Um, but other people did tell me this qualified, but I, mean, I, don't, want to, I don't want to argue that point. I, I was told by others that this was a qualifying event or a qualifying uh, amount or qualifying purpose. And I think, you know, I think, you know, Al is tasked with reading a, a small federal document and, and understand, <laughs> understand and bring it back his best assessment. Um, and I think he kind of explained in the $1 million that we have to reimburse ourselves that he could probably say Foster Bella is a um, partner of the city and they produce um, television shows or program for us. So I'm sure he could say that and we probably, I don't think the Biden administration will come and hit us hard, um, you know, so I don't want Al to be, feel like he talk to us and say, oh yeah, everybody agrees, so let's put on the thing, and Mr. Roebuck didn't agree and say whatever, um, but I think, you know, Dan as well as his assessments, his roll call, that's how Dan looks at it and says, I think we should have said instead of late front, should have been Bella Foster, and we should have voted on that, and as a private business should have been explained to us, and we still say yay or nay, then we say, said yay, then we probably say, you know, yay, you know, now, so um, it depends on if you guys want to put on the agenda or not. So yeah, but, uh, you just want to say, forget the agenda. We all, four to one, we all say yeah, and Dan says no, and Al says we legal and won't have to pay the $50,000 back, and we keep moving, or we say procedural, let's agendize it and vote on it and keep moving. I, I would just question, is there, you know, we've, we've spent the money, it's gone. And Dan has some very valid points that maybe we shouldn't have done it the way we did it, but is are we kind of just crying about spilt milk right now, or is there something we can do tonight to to rectify this? Or you know, what are our options? To you know, I, we're kind of sitting here talking about oh we shouldn't have done it, shouldn't have done it. Well, what can we do to to rectify this? Is, is there something legally, Fred? That uh, what I was saying is that money has been paid out. And to get it back or to make some change in it, you need to have all parties who are involved in it before the commission to comment. Uh, you can't just do something to somebody that's not here and expect that to fly. And I think Al probably disagrees with me on this is that we get $50,000 that the commission never authorized to an entity that we never authorized giving it to. And I think it needs to be agendized so this body, body that we want to approve it, can, can do so. Okay, so we appear to have the votes. Um, I don't care if it goes on you know, the agenda next time. That's probably the right thing to do. I would just add, uh, can we get a final interpretation on this? I mean, I, I, I've heard different opinions on this. I mean, so can we at least come back? I mean, I'm not gonna reverse, I'm not gonna take the money hey, away from her. Hey, I mean, if we come back and somebody says, hey, you've done the wrong thing here. You, you truly cannot give her this money. I'm gonna say, take it out of the general fund and- well, Commissioner, here, here, here uh, just to, to direct. Here's your options. Do nothing, one, water's under the bridge. You heard what Commissioner Roebuck's reaction to that is going to be. <laughs> Two, do nothing and say, Minner, go ahead and split it up, the money as you said so, so you make sure that when Roebuck complains about it, that you got the city's base covered, which I think is also reasonable. C, put it on the agenda, tell me to put it on consent agenda, for next meeting where Commissioner Roebuck will pull it 
and you vote on it. Those are your three options. I don't think you need any more clarification than that. This body needs to choose and direct me A, B, C. Gotcha. Yeah, you I'm good. Thank you. If you choose C, it'll be on the agenda on December 8th. Well, and I, I think, got to pick one of those options. I yeah. think C is fine with me. Okay, C. Everybody, okay, so you got it. All right. To Mr. Roebuck, anything else? C it is. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Commissioner Connell? No, ma'am. Commissioner Peterson? Nothing tonight. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Commissioner Burry? Uh, yes, this past weekend I had an opportunity to go out to the mall for the lighting of the tree festival and uh, I just want to encourage everybody go out to the mall and, and look at it it's, it's it's a lot better than what you may may think and uh, we need to promote uh, shopping local and uh, get out and spend some money uh, they got a, a great little Christmas tree deal going through the 28th uh, silent auctions their Christmas trees decorated by all the public schools and all the money goes to the arts programs in those schools. So just a good, good thing to go out and check out. Mayor Christian. A uh, couple of things. Chief, if you can um, just come closer for me, please. Um, I got a letter here from someone um, at Call Street. I don't know if Al's familiar with it. Um, I guess the panel I'm looking on, on online, it's off a long go drive. They got a big code enforcement summit letter. Apparently she's saying that I guess it's several owners they share a parking lot and we code them for the asphalt and so they're saying that it'll be hard to get all the owners to contribute to the parking lot i think it's five owners um then they're saying if they do it then the city trucks are driving tearing the parking lot up so are you familiar with this at all i'm not i haven't seen that yeah that they, they, Mr. Murray, that's sitting on my desk. Let me get with chief on it tomorrow and i'll okay. square it away and, and the second one is i got a call from a realtor, I guess she's doing property management on the properties off of Mount Clare Road. Um, there's the, um, I think the mobile home complex right there across from, used to be Mark Clare Oaks. Um, they're saying that I guess people are walking through the um, road and they are thinking, afraid it's gonna be some violent confrontation between the residents and the owners. Have you got wind of that? Well, I'm, I'm well aware of that and we've been working with that resident and increasing patrols and um, that is a long-term on. Is that a private road or city road? <clears throat> no, it's a it's a private road for their um, subdivision okay. or for their their HOA, um, and people do use it as a cut-off path, and we have patrols in there. But um, we, we're addressing the issue. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chief. Yes, sir. I didn't want to get a wrong answer to them. They've been calling. <laughs> um, that's all. I have a happy Thanksgiving to to everyone. Be be safe. And Mr. Connell, can you bowl? Uh, about a 75. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll challenge you. <laughs> Good job.